Jesse Rich Ministries, called by God to take the word of faith to New York City, America, and all the world. Today, God's people desperately need to be taught who they are in Christ Jesus, how to be led by the Holy Spirit, and walk in the God kind of love so they can live in victory in every area of their life. Stay tuned to today's dynamic message as Brother Rich ministers the word of faith. Hi, I'm Pastor Jesse Rich. So honored to lie to you tune in today. If you have your Bibles, let's turn our Bibles over here to Ephesians chapter 6. And we'll begin to read here in verse 10. And we'll lay a foundation here and see the importance of how, about speaking God's word and why we do this. Now the scripture says here, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principles, against powers, against rules, darkness, world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. Wherefore, take the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, withstand the evil day, and having done all stand, stand therefore. Having learned the bread of truth, having known the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shall preparation the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you should be able to quench all the fire darts wicked. And take the helm of salvation, now verse 17, and take the helm of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication of the Spirit, and watching there in truth all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now this verse 17 says here, and take the helm of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. That's where we get that Greek word rhema, R-H-E-M-A, the spoken word of God. Now, Jesus spoke the word. This is where we learn this from. It's back over in the book of Matthew. We'll go back over here to Matthew here. And we'll start here in Matthew chapter 4. And the scriptures teach us here and show us here how Jesus spoke the word and, you, and resist the devil. Now, we're basing this on because, remember, we've read many times here in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, Jesus said Answered and said, Them have faith in God. Then he went on and said in verse 23, For verily I say in you, the whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, here in Matthew, the scripture says here in chapter 4, verse 1, Then was Jesus led up the spirit and willing to be tempted of the devil. And when he fasted forty days and forty nights, he afterwards in hunger. When the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now, verse 4 of Matthew 4. And Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word proceed thou the mouth of God. Now, here Jesus is quoting a verse here from Deuteronomy. Now, the devil came as, as temptation and tried to get him to turn this rock into bread. Remember, that's like the, one of the first things that, that Adam and Eve were tempted with, was that, with food. And they partook of that fruit. And by doing so, they died spiritually and died physically. The scripture teaches us, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26, that death is an enemy. And we need to know that Jesus destroyed him that had power of death, that is the devil. Now, we have authority over the devil in Jesus' name as believers. What we need to do is learn to speak God's word. It's the sword of the Spirit. It's the weapon that God gave us. See, when something happens to you as a believer now, as a Christian, when something happens to you, trauma comes up, test, trial, some kind of tragedy, the first thing you want to think of is, now what does the Word say about this? And not only that, you want to examine your life and find out where did I open the door of the devil to come in. Because we give the devil any place, like Ephesians 4, the Scripture says in verse 27, need to give place to the devil. And it goes on and says, let him soul steal no more, but let him labor, work with his hands, the thing that he have to give that need it. And that, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Now we're responsible for our mouth. It's our responsibility as believers that we don't allow any corrupt communication to proceed out of our mouth. Now, one way we can stop our mouth from talking these things is filling our mouth up with God's Word. Remember in Joshua 1, verse 8, God said, This book of law, we call it the Bible, the Word of God, this book of law should not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written there, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now, how are we going to have good success? How are we going to prosper? Well, one thing is we need to meditate on the Word day and night. That's like the, the first psalm teaches about meditating on God's Word. Now, this is usually the last thing that any of us really want to do as Christians, as believers, once we receive the Lord as our Savior, is to take the time day and night to meditate on the Word. Quote a scripture yourself over and over again. You know, people around you, just quote it underneath your breath. If people are not around you, then quote it out loud. 
you know, I did almost all the way to television station today. I just take Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22, and almost the whole drive, I just kept saying it to myself. My son, attend to my words. Incline are my saints. Let them not depart from eyes. Keep them in the heart. For their life to those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Now, what I did with those verses when I first got them is, I, I was listening to Bible on tape and people ministering the Word of God. I memorized them. And I wrote them on an index card or typed them out on an index card. Today, you just print, you know, print them off with your computer. And, or if you don't have a computer, then write them out. And just reread them until you memorize them. And then as you lie there in bed or during the night when you can't sleep or any other time. I mean, once you memorize them, and it's good to keep looking at them if you're all possible. But while you're driving or something, you don't have to look at them. You could just keep quoting them over and over again. Just repeat it constantly. So what are you doing? You're meditating on the Word. You're, you're feeding your spirit man on God's Word. You're, build, you're building your spirit man up with the Word of God. You're taking time to get the Word inside your spirit. Now, not only that, when a problem rises, then the first thing you can do is speak the Word to the problem. That's what Jesus did. As soon as Satan came to Jesus and tempted him, now Jesus cast that thought down. He resists the devil. Remember the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God the pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing is all self against the knowledge of God, bringing captivity and thought to be to Christ. Now as we speak the word, Meditate on the Word. Now, again, this is a lot of work. It takes discipline on our part. I mean, the whole drive that you're driving someplace or traveling, you're going to be thinking or you'll be talking to somebody else. It takes extreme discipline to retrain yourself. When I first started out preaching, I'm preaching to a few churches that invited me in, but also I was doing home Bible studies. And as a process of time, I'd do like five or six a week, travel around New England doing these home Bible studies. Go all the way up to Vermont and other places, you know, every week. There, it's like Monday, I would go a certain direction, Tuesday, another place, Wednesday, another place. And then the next week, start all over again. Well, now, I'm teaching people the Word, ministering to them by the Holy Spirit. Well, this missionary called me, and he was traveling through New England, heard about me, and asked if he'd come stay at my house for a couple, two or three days. I said, sure. And I said to him, I said, now, I do Bible studies, and Every evening, i got to go do these Bible studies. So I won't be able to entertain you or hang around. If you'd like to go, you're welcome to go. So he came, and I brought all the stuff, his suits and clothes and everything, into the house, gave him this bedroom, and, and I told him, you know, make yourself at home. You know, the refrigerator, microwave, the stove, the television, showed him how to use stuff, and said, now, you don't need to come to ask me to eat or something. If there's something you want or you want to do something, just make yourself at home. Well... So I said, but during the afternoon, I'm preparing myself to get ready for the meeting. And then on the way to the meeting, I, you know, if you want to go with me, you're welcome to go, but I don't talk. That's real strict, you know. So uh, he said, okay, you know, what are all those rules and stuff? So later on that evening, I'm coming down the stairway, getting ready to leave, and he decides he wants to go with me. I said, fine. So we got in the car, and we're driving there. Now he's getting real antsy. Because we got a, a decent ride, maybe 45 minutes, not a real long ride, but he, he's getting low antsy because he's not talking. And so, uh, you know, I get to this Bible study, and I got like two people there. They've been coming every week, usually the same two people, sometimes be a few more than that, for probably a few years. But been doing it every week, unless I had to go preach somewhere else, or had our New England camp here or something, I'm there. This one happened to be every Friday night. Well, now, on the way home, he began to comment about some things. Now, you know, he just didn't, you know, to him that was kind of unusual not to talk. Well, what happens is with ministers, sometimes they do their part of talking themselves off. And what happens is they're, they're not that sensitive to the Holy Spirit when they do get up to minister. I mean, we're, given the, we're to be given a hospitality, but apt to teach. And when the hospitality starts affecting your teaching, you need to cut out the hospitality and spend more time with God. I mean, you see a pitcher now. He's a relief pitcher. He's out there warming up in the bullpen. Well, now, you know, he's just not going to burn himself out out there warming up because they may have him go sit down in about another 20 minutes and realize they're not going to use him. And then another uh, next inning, they may pull him upright again and start warming up again. Well, the point is, he's not going to he's not gonna throw everything he's got into it until he gets out to the mound because he was just warming up, loosening himself up. Well, spiritually speaking, 
you want to keep your spirit, man, build up. So when something comes that you're all ready for, see, the reason that we stay in God's word is we want to be prepared if something happens, if Satan comes to attack us. All the time we put in the word, all that time we put in prayer, all that time we put worshiping God and spending time praying the spirit, that's going to help us. So when something happens, the first thing we've been trained to do is do what the Word says. This is a guy who went to Bible school, and he graduated the, uh, and one, one of the years, he went the same year as I went, and he ended up becoming Brother Hagin's pilot. Well, he had been in the Air Force. He had flown, I think, uh, uh, the Blackbird, you know, that special jet airplane that's stealth, and it's a bomber. And so he flew these special aircraft like that, and they'd fly like 80,000 feet. Well, he's up there at 80,000 feet, and both engines on this jet went off at the same time, which is like major rare, I guess. And so they're going to begin to drop. Now, he said we had to get below 50,000 feet before we could try to restart the engines. And so we're falling. And we're going to hit, you know, we're coming down quick. <laughs> Especially if you, you know, you're in that plane, you really think it's double time. So, uh, you know, as they got down to 50,000 feet, and he was talking about it at the time he wasn't saved, and, uh, you know, he, he just, well, if God doesn't do something, this thing's going to crash and burn. He said, you know, in a little bit, we're going to make a decision. If these engines don't start, we're going to have to bail out. Now, at the time, and this is going long back a long time ago, the, that plane cost $45 million. I mean, that'd be like chump change today for one of those. But anyway, so they fell below 50,000 feet, tried to restart the engines, couldn't get them to start, tried again, couldn't get them to start, tried again, couldn't get them to start. He said to his co-pilot, he says, now, we're going to try again. If we don't get him started again, we're going to bail out. He said, well, that's the last thing I want to do because, you know, you, again, you're, you're crashing this $45 million piece of equipment. But we got one of the engines to start. And I don't remember if they got the other one or not. But anyway, they ever fly the plane, able to land it. Now, that happened a few different times with different kinds of jets that he flew over past this time. He's a Vietnam uh, bomber pilot. And he talked about how things would come up. Well, later on, he got born again. He got there, you know, turned on the God's Word, and he's reading his Bible, and he'd always known that God had been with him to help him, even though he wasn't saved. And he read there in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, that God will give his angels charge of them and keep them all their ways, lest thou dash putting a stone, you know, in, in, in Psalms 91. And then he read there in, in Hebrews that they all, are they not all ministering spirits, those angels? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who should be heirs of salvation? He said, you know, at the time I wasn't an heir of salvation, but I was going to be, and God knew it. And God would protect him. You know, that got me thinking about my life before I came to Jesus. The thing, things that I'd miraculously get through. Looking back at it was God's protection. Of course, I had people praying for me, and thank God for that. But see, now God, bless his heart, he's there to help us, and he wants to protect us. Now, once we receive the Lord, we have a hunger for God's word then. A sign that you're born again, that you're saved, is what, like 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says, as newborn babes desire the sincere mark words you may grow thereby. And one sign is that, that you're born again, you pass from death to life. The scripture says in 1 John, because you love the brethren. And you do. Now, you may not agree with their doctrine, but you love all the brethren. That means brothers and sisters in the Lord. I mean, you love everybody because the love of God's in your heart. But you've got a special place in your heart to other believers. I mean, you're longing for fellowship and you even get around them. And you'll be glad that you can, you know, because they're, you'll, you'll sense your spirit. That person's a believer. They're born again. They're saved. I've asked people. I've been on flights or on a bus and public transportation. And I said to the person, you're saved, aren't you? You're born again. Oh, yeah, you know. And uh, how'd you know? Well, you know in your spirit. I was at a funeral one time, and was out of state, had to go to, you know, perform the, the funeral service. And so there was the guy that ran the mortuary. I think he was either ran or owner and or both. And so there was people coming to visit him, the person that had deceased. And uh, so I got to talking to the person who owned the place. I said, uh, are you saved? Now, I, I had my spirit that he was. And uh, he said, yes, I am. And then he paused for a little bit, and I didn't, I'm not too sure what he was going to say next. He's thinking. He said, you know, Reverend, it's been 22 years since somebody asked me that question. I want to thank you for asking me. 
Yeah, I ain't been to, being going on to tell me how he got born again, how he got saved. Well, see now, how'd you know? Well, you know, it wasn't because I was such a spiritual hotshot. It's just that your, your spirit will know things like that. And you can train your spirit, man, to be sensitive to the spirit. Now, how are you going to get to know Jesus? By getting in the Word. See, this is the reason why people doubt their salvation and they doubt if Jesus is really real after they've received him as their Lord and Savior is they don't get to know him through the Word. You're going to get to know Jesus through the Word. I mean, thank God for prayer and fellowship with God. But you'll get to know God. You'll get to know th Jesus through the Word because the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God and His Word are one. And as you put the time in the Word, you'll get to know Jesus personally. See, this is one of the reasons so many people are overwhelmed by doubt and unbelief, is they don't put enough time in daily in God's Word. See, Jesus said here, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Well, that's God's Word, the Bible. Remember Isaiah 55, verse 11? It says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return me void, it shall accomplish that which please, and prosper in the thing whereto you sent it. And the psalm said, He sent His word and healed us, and delivered us from our destructions. In Psalm 107, verse 20. Well, God did send His word. He sent Jesus Christ, His living word. And He gave us His written word. I mean, we're the only people that's got the full written word of God. I mean, you think about all those people in the Bible. None of them, Paul or any of them, Job, none of them had a full Bible. But ever since, the Bible was complete. You know, a couple thousand years ago, we've always had God's Word. And we know the full counsel of God by going His Word. And see, look what they were able to accomplish just in the knowledge that they had. You know, like Jesus said to Peter, when Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, in Matthew 16. Jesus said, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is heaven. What was that? That was revelation knowledge from God's Word. Peter knew in his spirit, by the Holy Spirit, that Jesus was the Christ, the Son, living God. God manifested in the flesh. The Messiah, the one that was to come. Well, now Jesus commended him. Let him know it was the Holy Spirit that let him know, uh, let him, informed him of that. But that same chapter, when Jesus began to, you know, kind of let them know that he's going to be, he's going to be leaving, he's going to be crucified. And Peter said, not so, Lord. And Jesus said, in the same chapter, in Matthew 16, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou offense unto me. Well, now, what, what do you mean? Well, you got Peter hearing from the Holy Spirit in one area and not hearing from the Holy Spirit in another area. Sounds like some of us, duh. Well, we need to put the time in the Word. And the more time we put in the Word, meditating on the Word, like Joshua, God told Joshua, this book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. See, too many people, too many Christians, don't put enough time in God's Word. See, read exceedingly great and precious promise. Get you a highlighter. Go through your Bible and mark scriptures pertaining to promises that cover problems in your life. I, I did that as soon as I got saved. I bought the Bible on cassette tape. Today you can get it online, you know, and I uh, listen to it, like Bible at Gateway or on, on, on the Internet. Or just uh, get you some D CDs or download it to your iPod or your cell phone and listen to the Word. Well, okay, so I'm, I'm listening to the Scriptures being read. And I'd make a note of it mentally. Maybe I'd be at work, you know, couldn't stop, but I'd hear something. And later on, I'm going to get somebody to help me find it in my Bible, and I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to keep listening to it, and I'm going to memorize it. And one of them is Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need. I, I say my need. Shall supply all your need according to rich glory of Christ Jesus. Then as I went through the New Testament, started all over again. Then later on, I got Philippians 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, strengthen me. I was going to this church where I got born again at, and uh, I'd volunteered to usher. Well, our head usher, the guy that was our head usher, I'm talking to him about scriptures that I'd got in the Bible. See, like Sunday morning, I'd tell him a scripture I'd got that week, and Sunday night, and then midweek service, Wednesday night service, prayer meeting. I'd let him know we'd be out there in the foyer, stand there, or, or at the back door, waiting for people to come. And uh, I'd say, hey, Norm, you got your Bible? And so he'd go get his Bible. And I said, read Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. He'd read it to me. Now, I'm all excited because I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of having a rough time financially. And I finally found a scripture financially that covered my financial problems. But my God shall supply all your need according to the rich glory of Christ Jesus. Well, now he proceeded to tell me that that doesn't mean what you think it means. That means spiritual needs. 
Well, then later on, I got Philippians 4, verse 13. I'd always been told about my inabilities and, you know, birth defects and whatever else that I was unable to do things. And so I, you know, I, I shared that with him. I said, you got your Bible? And he went and got it. See, this guy's been saved Holy Spirit for years. I just got saved Holy Spirit. And he went and got it. I said, now read Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, I, I, but I can do all things through Christ's strength me. I can do all things through Christ's strength me. And that's what I just kept saying. I can do all things through Christ's strength me. I can do all things through Christ's strength me. Well, now he, you know, he jumped on that. That doesn't mean just physical things. That means spiritual things. And any scripture I'd find, he'd begin to talk me out of it. And you see, you don't want to do that to people. You never want to rob people. He didn't know any better. But you don't want to rob people of their faith. You know, according to Matthew chapter 18, verse 6, it'd be better that millstone be hung around your neck because the little ones stumble. And when you come in and take people's faith away from them, they're believing God for healing, and you tell them, well, now don't get your hopes built up. It may not be God's will. He may put this sickness on you, teach you something. Or there'll be some mysterious reason why you're sick. These things we don't quite understand. You're robbing people of their faith. I've spent my whole ministry trying to build people up in faith to believe God because they'll go to the doctor and the doctor says this is incurable. Well, the word of God says with men is possible, not with God. With God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Him who believeth. Well, you see now, you may have heard something that they told you it's incurable, but you've got the promises of God. You've got his word. And what you want to do is meditate on that word. Take a verse of scripture and just memorize it. Keep quoting it to yourself. See, if Jesus hadn't known these verses in Matthew 4, he wouldn't be able to quote them to the devil. But see, he did know them, so he's able to tell. tell. Tell the devil what the word says. When you get born again, when you receive Jesus, your Lord and Savior, you're going to have in your spirit a hunger for God's word. You're going to, you know, I used to feel like I just want to tear the pages out and eat it. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I wanted to get the Word in me. I was so hungry for the Word, and still am. God, I just get, when you get thrilled with the Word, when you get excited for the, for the Word, when you're reading your healing scriptures or prosperity scriptures or verses that have to do with whatever you're believing God on, do it with enthusiasm. Be the, that you're excited to do it. You're glad to do it. Your, your expectations. I mean, if you was expecting somebody to deliver you some money, you'd be all excited about it. And you want to get that excited with God's Word. When you get thrilled, that's an indication that you really believe it. But if you're just saying, well, God, my God meets all my needs. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm blessed going in, blessed going out. I can do all things Christ change. <gasps> you really don't believe it. But when you begin to say, thank God I can do all things through Christ strength me. Praise the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Greater is he that is in me and he is in the world. Now you got something to it. So you want to get excited with the word, thrilled with the word. I was thrilled when I got born again. Hallelujah. I've been thrilled ever since. The greatest miracle of my life is that Jesus saved me. Saved me physically and saved me physically, or spiritually too. He healed me first through people praying for me and His mercy and grace, and then got me born again. Well, you see, when you receive Jesus, your Lord and Savior, you're going to have, whether you realize it or not, the term or not. You may not know the term, but you're going to want to have God's Word. You're going to want to hear God's Word. When I got born again, I, I just went through the newspaper and looked for churches that were having services. I'd be working today, you know, and I'd try to find a church to have one on Monday night. Then a church to have one on Tuesday night. We had on Wednesday night. Then I'd look for a church on Wednesday night. See, I'm looking for, to go somewhere to hear the Word. This is before I got any faith tapes. And I'm searching this out. See, I'm trying to find it. And I'd go to church after church, the services they had advertised. And I remember this one church I went to. They, had, they called him an evangelist. And he got up, and uh, he read. He had it all typed out, apparently. The whole hour, or however long he talked, about his vacation just went on. Now, I don't know anything, and I left, and I was still hungry, spiritually speaking. I mean, it'd be like if you went to somebody's house, you ate, you know, and just ate an appetizer and left, and you think as soon as I get home, I'm going to eat. And then, you know, I'd follow people home from my church, total strangers. I just got saved. Follow them all the way home at night. Pull up behind them in their driveway. They'd get out, you know, they're looking, trying to see me through the headlights. Finally, I'd get out and go up to him. And I remember this one lady and her husband, she said to her husband, oh, that's that boy that just got saved. Well, we'd talk out in their yard. See, I've came home or followed them home because I want to hear more word. Finally, they'd say to each other, well, come on in. 
So we'd go in, and I'd ask them everything I could think of about God and His Word. Not, not tricky questions, not trying to trap them. I'm just hungry for God's Word. Then I knew some people that went to another church that lived in another town. And I'd drive sometimes after, out there at night, after our church service. I'd knock on their door, ring their doorbell, they'd come. And I'd sit there in their uh, den or living room they had and listen to them tell me stories about God. The husband falls fall asleep sometimes in his recliner. He's got to get up about 4.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, go to work. i got to get up too, but I have to get up that early. And they had these uh, records there like CDs of some minister teaching about divine healing in the cover, still sealed, the, sealed by the plastic, never been opened. I saw that in their bookshelf. I said, hey, let's open these and listen to these. They looked at one another, okay, you know. So we, I, I'd sit there on the floor, and we'd play these records, like playing CDs, see. Listen to it. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to get all the word. I was hungry for the word, and still am. Man, I want all the fade tapes and CDs that's out there. I want to build my spirit map up on God's word. I want to put the time in God's word. Why? Because the best investment you can make is time in God's word as a believer. You want to every day put that time in God's word. And get excited. Make yourself get thrilled with the Word. Just begin to praise God and thank God you've got a Bible, you've got some Scripture. I'm not talking about growing up in church. I did that. I'm talking about getting in the Word until you get hungry for God's Word. I want to encourage you, if you had not been one of our church services, you need to do so. It may be a, a distance for you to drive, and we've got people to drive from other states. Two or three hours it takes them just to get to church on Sunday morning. Actually do that. They'll be there when you come. And they'll come to hear the Word. Well, maybe you'd have to drive 15 minutes or an hour. So what? You're coming to hear the word. You want to come. There's people, you know, I live in New York City. There's people come from all over the world just to come there to eat the restaurants and go to the, the shows. Be, check our website out at jesserichministries.com or just call us if you want to know about our church services we're doing. I enjoyed being with you today. I want to encourage you. Get in God's word. Read your healing scriptures every day. Until next time, it's Pastor Jesse Rich. Mind, we love you. We're praying for you. And remember, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for joining the broadcast of Word of Faith, the outreach ministry and teachings of Jesse Rich. If you'd like for Brother Rich to agree with you in prayer or to receive a copy of today's program or additional teaching materials, contact Jesse Rich Ministries, Post Office Box 237170, New York, New York, 10023. Visit our website at www.jesserichministries.com.